Delivering power to the people, a vast new network of transmission lines is beginning to snake across the country. The arteries of Australia's energy system are being rapidly rebuilt. But people power may bring this expansion to a halt. We have barred access. We haven't yet felt comfortable to allow access. That's our only card we can play. Within sight of the Victorian New South Wales border, Daniel Linklater's surveying the massive new towers on his property, Trentham Station. Standing tall on dry land cropping country, the high voltage transmission line is one part of a 900 kilometre energy superhighway. Certainly in our case, uh, it hasn't impacted at all. In fact, uh, in December we were harvesting right alongside where they were boring holes for the um, to concrete the bases for the new towers, so it's, uh, it's worked quite well. Two years in the making, Daniel Linklater says he's satisfied with the consultation process and was able to secure a fair one-off payment from Transgrid for the acquisition of the easement. But he gets why other farmers feel differently. This line is on, on large-scale properties, pastoral country, um, it, it's not the same impact visually or aesthetically for communities, so I think we're talking very different, um, very different projects and impacts. But yeah, certainly, as I said, I would encourage everybody that's concerned to ensure that uh, that they are consulted properly, and that when, when it comes to hosting these transmission lines, that they extract every penny. The energy market operator has mapped an extra 10,000 kilometres of transmission lines that will need to be built by 2030 to connect far-flung renewable energy projects to consumers as coal-fired power stations close. This project, Energy Connect, is the first and currently the only so-called priority project under construction. Others have stalled, facing deep grassroots resistance. In the front line of the transmission war, is the proposed Western Renewables Link. Here we go, Gussie. What do you reckon? Potatoes! The Myers family farms seed potatoes near Ballarat. There's not a high voltage power line in sight around here, but Osnet plans to build one. When land agents knocked on Catherine Meyer's door three years ago, she says she was offered a gift card in exchange for access to the farm. I'm a pretty trusting person. I thought, oh, you know, that makes sense. They can come out and do it. And my father-in-law actually went through the agreement. He said, no, this is actually providing unfettered access for four years for both surface, but also invasive surveys on the property. So that $500 gift card was to allow them four years of free, free access to our farm. It was the beginning of what she describes as a nightmare and a sham consultation process during which locals say their concerns have largely been dismissed. There was a real challenge in getting quality information out of the company to landholders. They'd often speak to the media first and then put things up on their website and then come and speak to the people that were directly affected. We were desperately hungry for information and it was really difficult to get good solid quality answers um, out of the organisation. Landholders have protested loudly, but their pleas for existing power lines to be upgraded instead or for the new ones to be built underground, have fallen on deaf ears. This has been a spectacular fail in terms of community um, negotiation and engagement. I, the trust is so broken, I, I don't know how they'll get it back. Signs of deep community opposition to the Western Renewables Link are everywhere around here and it's grinding the project to a standstill. At this stage, it's hard to see the lines being built by 2026 as slated without the Victorian government using extraordinary powers to forcibly gain access to properties and compulsorily acquire land. Such heavy-handed interventions are exactly what federal authorities had hoped would be avoided, with cost and time pressures climbing on the road to net zero emissions.
there may need to be what they call compulsory acquisition to build easements through people's farming property. That is not a nice thing to have to do, but that's what, they're the sort of things that governments are going to have to address. Within seven years, the federal government wants 82% of Australia's power to come from renewable sources like wind, solar and hydro, more than doubling the capacity built in the last 20 years. These new transmission lines are crucial to achieving that goal. The Energy Infrastructure Commissioner, Andrew Dyer, acknowledges timeframes are tight. Well, if you look at the lead times required to get this stuff done, if certain decisions don't happen this year or go into 2024, time frame, we won't meet the 2030 deadlines. To help break the deadlock, some states have started offering compensation to affected landholders, in addition to the one-off payments transmission companies are required to make. In New South Wales, $200,000 for every kilometre paid over 20 years. Victoria's offering the same amount, but over 25 years. Queensland's scheme will pay an average of $300,000 per kilometre over 20 years. And in a first, compensation's also available to neighbouring properties. In a rough calculation, this at least doubles the amount of um, payment that you would receive as a landholder. So I think it's a game changer, right. and I'm sure other states will be considering these programs very well. Across the Bass Strait, the proposed Project Marinus link is also falling behind schedule. Scott Colvin's a second generation farmer in northeast Tasmania, one of about 80 who'll be affected by the proposed new high voltage power line. Tas networks know they can single us out and they can divide and conquer the group. Unlike other states, there's no ongoing compensation on offer here, just the one-off payment. We're not seeking to stop development. That, that is absolutely not what we're seeking to do. We are seeking to work with the, work with the power company, work with the transmission company to, to get a better outcome for, for farmers. Why is it that if you get a Telstra tower on your property, you get paid annually for that tower? And if you get a transmission tower on your property that has a far greater impact, you get a one-off government valuation payment. If I was fortunate enough to have a wind farm on my property, if I, if I had the geography for that, I would get paid annually and it would be an asset to the property. If I hold the transmission line through my property that carries that power from the generator, it's a, it's a curse to my property. Taz Networks built a power line across the Colvins property decades ago and wants to expand that existing easement to build the new one. Dubbed a project of national significance, for Scott Colvin, it'll be a disruptive and costly exercise. We've worked around their infrastructure for the last 70 years. The minute you step outside the existing footprint, it's a challenge for us. Pivots won't turn. Further down the line, we've got the line crossing milking yards, shearing sheds, sheep yards, people's houses. Under the initial plan, James Petty would have had to move his purpose-built shearing shed, the centre of his prime lamb operation. He managed to negotiate a slight bend in the line that'll cut through his property. Saying that we're going to wear the cost of this with minimal recompense, um, it's, it's wrong, <laughs> in, in my opinion. Yeah. The family moved from Victoria to Tasmania nearly a decade ago because of the changing climate. He's not against the renewable transition, but wants assurances from TAS Networks that his livestock and livelihood won't be harmed. My biggest fear is the construction phase. Once it's here and it's built and you just put up with it, I suppose. He, he said to me, oh, the, those issues, they're all micro issues. And I said, well, they might be micro for you, but for me, they're macro. Perhaps acknowledging these missteps, TAS Networks is taking part in a new training program being rolled out by the Energy Infrastructure Commissioner, whose advice seems pretty basic. Threatening the use of powers. Absolute no, no, you, you'll, you'll get thrown out quicker than you can blink if you threaten the use of powers. And um, uh, they should be buried in a closet somewhere in, in the back room, used very sparingly, it, uh, say it's break the glass stuff. Having all, all, all of your ducks in a row before you go out knocking on landholders' doors is, is a big part of getting social licence right. People are not there on the land to host energy infrastructure. 
Andrew Bray is the head of Realliance, a pro-renewables group advocating for the regional communities bearing the brunt of the energy transition. I think we are, um, there's a bit, of a, a bit of a learning curve going on at the moment. Like we haven't built large scale transmission in the country for, for some decades uh, with a couple of exceptions. So uh, transmission planning has, has taken a while to sort of get up to speed on that. And I think um, now that a couple of projects have gone out and started consultation, you know, that sort of they've realised that they didn't do some of that early work that they should have, and that would have made made life much simpler. There's certainly a broad recognition that from within the companies that they need to do a better job on this. The political stakes are high for a Labor government that pledged $20 billion to rewire the nation, and the Energy Minister is putting heat on the companies to lift their game. There's a lot of a lot of work to be done, and we. We're not really at the point where the wheels are really digging in, so we, um, we need to get, get moving, that's for sure. For now, these farmers are using what power they have to negotiate a better deal. At this stage, we're denying them access. When the other player holds the, the royal flush, it's, it's difficult to have a fair game.